Hello guys, Dr. Vase Labs here, welcome. So, um, tonight I uh, wanted to make a short video about uh, updates on uh, some projects that are going on here. And I have uh, some special things to show you that I'm sure you will be uh, very curious. Uh, especially for people that are more technical and curious about how it's done, how it's, uh, how it's made. So let's uh, begin right now with the 6.6, .6, no, in fact, 6 kilowatt charger here. So that's the uh, 6 kilowatt option for the SRF and SRS0. And as you can see, this one is opened because I wanted to uh, open it and uh, see how it is made. And uh, just don't confuse, I don't have any SRS or SRF yet. I just got this charger, but I still have my 2017 SR. Okay, just to clarify. Clarify. Okay, so I uh, think that uh, it might be interested, uh, interesting for you to see that uh, charger inside. So you see that's the uh, J7072, uh, the input, the 240 AC. And uh, inside uh, you see that little uh, daughter board or uh, auxiliary board, which is for the input and output. And also that's the uh, output with uh, 8 gauge or 10 millimeter, 10, 10 square millimeter uh, gauge size wires here so that's the uh, wire that goes to the uh, battery I think or close to the uh, contactor so you see that's the AC input and the distributed uh, AC to the two units because this 6 kilowatt charger is made from two units you can see this one and this one there's two pcb one here and one here so that ac is distributed and uh, split into two output one for each charger the same as for the uh, output so the uh, there's a connector here you see and this is uh, red and black so it goes to the output and you see the output here positive and negative and those little screw with those wires here those are the output wires that output the um let me show you yeah you see it's 35 amp maximum input at the ac and 59 amp at the max current output and it's 6 kilowatt instead of 6.6 .6, and it's capable of taking from 80 to 117 volts all right, so uh, the construction is very well made and uh, you see that uh, there's a seal here, the same as on the uh, other side here. So that's a seal with uh, some rips. Those are very efficient uh, and uh, it's very difficult to get the water inside and there's a uh, kind of a pressurization uh, inlet or outlet. So that is just to equalize the pressure inside and outside. This is like waterproof, water can, can, cannot go inside, but it will uh, uh, permit the uh, pressure of the air outside of charger and inside the charger uh, to be equal, the same. Because you know, when this charger uh, is working, it's producing heat. And if it's producing heat, it means that the air uh, try to expand. And when it expands, it wants to go out. And once it cool down, the air contract inside and uh, the air uh, outside of the charger will thrive to go inside and you don't want it to have this uh, hair with uh, maybe water uh, when it's raining coming in because of this variation of pressure it will affect the charger reliability uh, and the uh, may might be uh, cause uh, some problems okay so the way to extract the heat from the inside to the outside is very well made um, it's a well-known principle, so you have all those big blocks here of aluminum, those are inductors and uh, I think they are covered by aluminum cap for the uh, EMI, the electromagnetic radiation, uh, to avoid uh, some uh, <laughs> interference with other uh, devices surrounding it. So that's inductors. Uh, there's a bus bar here with some uh, two TO220 uh, diodes here and uh, further uh, you see TO247 uh, big MOSFET for the switching power supply that it is because this is an AC to DC converter so um, 
all that heat is communicated to this uh, plate, the top plate here. And there's a heat sink here that is bolted. You see the bolt? And there's fans. And normally there's a cover here that goes on top of that. So the air, I think it's going from here to the other side. And take, talking about the other side, I'm showing you the big capacitor here. Uh, those are, I think it's uh, 250 volt, maybe 150 volt and 270 microfarad. Maybe this is on the AC side. Oh, yeah, 450 volts. So that's for uh, uh, the rectifying of the AC voltage going into DC. And then there's a kind of a buck converter that will reduce that DC voltage to the uh, charging voltage required by the zero. So that's interesting. And also you see there's um, uh, those cables here, those, well, where they are, oh yeah, okay. So there's here uh, those cables for the uh, two fans here. And also those cables for the communication, okay? Because there's a connector here that goes to the zero. I think it will communicate with the zero main bike board. Uh, that kind of round connector here that I just don't have the pin out, but I will be glad to have it <laughs> to probe. Maybe there is a CAN communications, uh, zero ground and uh, uh, 12 volt, 5 volt and other communications here. So that's interesting and that charger is uh, actually made by a company uh, that is called SMPC I think or it's the model but uh, it's in uh, British Columbia in uh, Canada and uh, that company is also making very high power modules for uh, uh, Shadamo and CCS uh, combo uh, charge station, the level 3 charge station. I think they are making 12.5 kilowatt big modules to convert the 600 volt and 480 volt to the uh, uh, 400 volt DC for electric car. So that's interesting and other projects here you see those are uh, very uh, great batteries this is a 12.5 and I have uh, back uh, to it a 11.4 2014 battery and as well as this uh, brick here that I'm equalizing actually because um, it is on balance so I'm charging it with this LTEC power supply which is a set to 116 you can see here and what's interesting is that I made my own charging adapter here so this piece here I've made it from a, uh, a defective brick here that had the big connector on top because this brick is uh, over discharge is no more working I've removed the BMS and contactors and these things you see uh, the big fuse so I've used this connector but I had to grind it a little bit I will show you so that's the other part of the video so I will just uh, disconnect the uh, charging power here that big connector is also for discharging as you can see and I will shut down the contactor click you heard it yeah so there's the indication here that the charger has been disconnected okay so let's take a look on this very great module here I will explain to you and by the way guys you will see on the uh, um, uh, um, the zero manual website where there's a lot of information for the zero technical that there's plans for making this kind of connector you have to pay attention to the mirror connection because you see there's a female and a male side and when you look at it this way or this way this one is mirror to this one so the pinout is different and you have to take very care uh, of that to not short anything in the BMS so what I did is I have uh, tie a wire to the negative here and there's I think from this pin here to the negative here there's the voltage of the pack it's the low voltage uh, the uh, low power uh, V plus here so 
that voltage is direct from the pack and instead of using four uh, or three AA battery to put some voltage through a resistor like it's in, uh, shown to activate the contactor to let the current go to these big pins here I prefer using a isolated DC-DC converter here that take the 116 uh, uh, volt and convert it to 12 volt I didn't have any 5 volt I'm not sure what's the best voltage to activate it but what I did is I've used a uh, resistor divider uh, to uh, lower that voltage to about 4 volt inside and since there's 4 volt through a uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor to one of these pins it will activate when I flip the switch here the contactor inside and let the high power be available here for charging or discharging I will show you uh, the uh, DC to DC converter that I used it's this one and in fact it's an AC to DC converter but personally since many years I've discovered that many times you can put DC at the AC input because there's anyway a rectifier inside so what it create is that the DC will continue straight to the rectifier part and then go to the uh, uh, DC DC converter part so that one uh, I've bought it uh, from uh, AliExpress for about three dollar each and it's a uh, 12 volt 3 watt 0.5 25 amp and I'm using it to generate the voltage from the pack itself instead of needing a battery or external battery and I've also uh, jumped those two wires that I think it's the power on uh, enable wire or something like that I just don't remember what's the name but all the information for that are on the zero manual website so it's working very well and now I'm balancing this pack because it was uh, way out of balance like 200 millivolt out of balance and we'll make some tests with it and the reason of those two packs here is because you know the zero in the back here you see it's covered it's because it's uh, spring here but uh, we still have snow outdoor and I'm planning a very very long trip this uh, this summer uh, to the 53th parallel in the north of Quebec uh, province so that's the further um, that's the longest and the that's the, uh, the, the, the route to the uh, most north part of the Quebec province that is still in pavement because I have a 0SR, I don't have a DS. So the goal is to be able to drive to that location which is very far and whereas there is not plenty of uh, <laughs> charge station. So there's a long stretch of about 380 kilometers where there is no charge station. And my best range with my power tank and my SR 2017 was 227 kilometers. I never went uh, further than that with a single charge. So now I'll have 380. So my plan is to use one of these uh, monolith to split it in uh, multiple pack and do just like uh, Terry did, uh, putting these on the side of a motorcycle where the foot are, or maybe, maybe. Uh, inside a trailer and uh, I will use a older frame of zero uh, as a single wheel trailer with the batteries inside and uh, carry that on the back of the zero but after I lifted those packs which is a uh, 170 pound I think it's quite heavy and uh, I just worry about the fact that uh, the zero wheel, rear wheel will have to handle all that mass when I accelerate and I brake and I corner uh, and uh, well I just worry about that because I never had any trailer on the back of a motorcycle uh, yet and uh, having a 170 pound plus the weight of the trailer I'm just not sure about that so if you have any opinion to share with, uh, with me about that guy or any other solution I will be glad to hear about it. So uh, I hope you have received that uh, video update and I will keep you updated on the uh, next project. And thanks for watching again and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, hey, don't, don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>